see everything turning in the name of Jesus. Whether the devil likes it or not. Jesus, but some of you are not in the spirit. You are not in the spirit. God bless this choir. The choir is always in the spirit. Now, let me show you something. Read what is here. Exodus 3, 4. And when the... God saw it before it happened. When God saw that the guy turned around, God said, aha, your limitations has ended. Now they are singing to you. I can see everything turning around and you're standing like this. If God is looking, would he see you turning around? Uh, do you want to turn around? It's a prophetic action. When the Lord saw, he saw. Let God saw you. Eh? Every English is allowed in the Bible. Hello? Let God see you turn around. Two I can see everything. Uh. I see everything. Uh. In the name of Jesus. I can see my family. I see my business. Uh. I see my life. Uh. I can see everything. I see everything. Uh. I see everything. Uh. I can see everything. I see everything. Uh. I see everything. Uh. Hallelujah. For all of you that turned around, everyone that God saw turning around, before you go out of this door, your miracle shall come. In the name of Jesus. For those who turn around, let me show you what God says concerning you. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 10. You will read it out with your own mouth. Again, another prophetic thing. Because Numbers 14, 28 says, As you speak in my ears, so I will do. So you are going to speak it with your mouth. Huh? Huh? God says, I should say to you, but you are going to repeat it to yourself. The Lord says, Say unto them, As truly as I live, say the Lord, As ye have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. All right, so give me that Proverbs, Proverbs 3 10. Now you want to say it that God shall hear you. So instead of putting thy, you put mine. So for instance, I say, So shall my bands be filled with plenty, and my presses shall burst out with new wine. Hello. All right, let's say it together now. One to go. So shall my bands be filled with plenty, and my presses shall burst out with new wine. If you believe it, shout hallelujah. Amen. Now, we did something at the workers' meeting, and you're going to do it. That's again prophetic. You've come with a cup into this new month. Your cup is empty you have exhausted what you had but you need for God to fill it up and this morning God will fill your cup in the name of Jesus Christ because it says that thy press shall burst out with new wine and that's what will happen now in the name of Jesus Christ fill my cup Lord fill my cup Lord I lift it up, Lord. Lift it to him this morning for feeling. Oh, my quench, this is the of my soul. Forever, I want you to feel Sing it one more.
more time as prayer. is filled to overflowing there must be a turnaround there are three things that can happen to a cup that is lifted up this morning for it not to be filled we need to deal with that because your overflow must start from now the first thing that can happen you can lift up your cup for all you care. But if there is a hand that is covering your cup, it cannot be filled. You will just be flowing over that cover. If there is a, an umbrella that is put over your cup or over your head, then the rain may come, the anointing may come, the new wine may come, but you will not fill your cup. First, you want to deal with every hand that is covering your cup. That says that your cup will not be filled this morning to overflow. That God must do something about it. Open your mouth say, Father. Say, Father. Thank you for bringing me into this month. The month of overflow. The month of turning around. I lift up my cup unto you. Every evil hand. Every evil umbrella covering my cup, stopping it from filling and overflowing. Oh Lord, cut those hands to pieces in the name of Jesus Christ. Destroy that umbrella in the name of Jesus. Every hand covering my cup this month that wants my cup to go empty again. When people are testifying of the goodness and the mercy of God, every hand covering my cup. I chop you to pieces. Every umbrella, I cut you to pieces. I burn you to ashes. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, they are cut off. Another thing that can happen is that you can have a hole in the cup. If there's a hole in the cup, even if wine is coming into it, there will be leakage. It can come all night. By the time you wake up in the morning, nothing will be there because the hole in the cup. It's like putting water in a basket. There's no amount of water that you put in there, the water is going to drain off. At the end of the day, no feeling, talkless, overflowing. Therefore, and the enemy can put a hole. When you hear when you hear the, the spirit of the hole in the pocket the hole in the pocket the enemy can put a hole in your pocket you'll be making money money will be coming as you are putting in your pocket at the end of the month you don't know what you have spent it for from this morning every hole that is put in your pocket or in your finances that is keeping you broke even when you are making money that hole must be sealed right now. The blood of Jesus will seal it right now. The Bible says if the hedge is broken, once there's a space in the hedge, the serpent will come in from there. And when the serpent comes in, poison will come in. Every source from which your, your cup has been, you know, has been tampered with. This morning, God must seal it up. In the name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth and say, Father... Say, Father, I lift up my cup unto you. Every hole in my cup causing leakages of anointing 
of fruitfulness of my finances. Oh Lord, by your blood, seal them this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. There shall be no more leakage. Everything that comes into you, that your pregnancy does not stop because that everything keeps flowing out. You are laboring, but the baby is not coming. Abortion, premature delivery. Oh Lord, seal every source of hole in my, in my cup. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Lastly, they may steal your cup. If you read Zechariah chapter 5, you'll find there, it talks about spiritual thieves. They come, they take away what belongs to you. You wake up in the morning, you can't find it. If you have people who have experiences like you put your, a pair of earrings somewhere and you just wake up and you are looking for one, they won't take all, they take one so that the other one is useless. If you lose money, you keep losing money, you don't know how it got lost. You are dealing with this agency I'm talking about. They come and they steal things. They can steal tangible things. They can steal opportunities from people. But every spiritual thief operating in your life, this morning, Holy Ghost fire, destroy them. Open your mouth, say, Father. Say, Father. Every spiritual thief in my life, in my family, stealing what belongs to me. What are you waiting for? Die by fire. Every thief, every spiritual thief, stealing what belongs to me in the physical, in the spiritual. Oh Lord, I command, cause them to die by fire. They do not deserve to live. The Bible says that a thief will not live. Suffer them not to live. In the name of Jesus. This month, there must be a turnaround. Ah, enough is enough. I have suffered enough. I'm tired of the valley. I am going to the mountain top. I am relocating by fire. I am tired of the valley. I am tired of the valley. Take me from the merry clay. Set my feet on the solid rock. Take me from the merry clay. Set my feet on the rock. I am tired, Baba. My admission is stolen. I can't get my admission into secondary school, into university, right jam three times, enough is enough. Auto girl. I conduct interviews, they do interviews, I've gone to three interviews, none of them is going through. And they are taking other people. They are taking my position. It's a lie. I have gone into three relationships. The relationship, none of them is working. Somebody else takes those men. Why? Why should I keep losing people? I've had three pregnancies. All the pregnancies just went like that in a mysterious way. Why? Why? My children, my seed, the seed of my generation, my Lord and my God, every thief in their life that is stealing what belongs to them, Holy Ghost fire, destroy them today. Destroy them today. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. I must hit my turning point. There must be a turnaround for me. And it's this month, not next month, it's this month. Things must overflow. Blessed shall be your name forevermore. In Jesus' name, you have turned around. Father in heaven, we thank you. You are the one who said in that Numbers 14, 28, that as we speak in your ears, you said so you will do. We have spoken, I, my Lord, my God, this morning. And you have heard our voices. Answer by fire in the name of Jesus. Every evil hand covering our cup from feeling since these years. Oh Lord God, when you say our quiver will be full with them, and yet there's nothing in our quiver. Every such hands covering our womb, covering our you know, you know, our reproductive organ, covering our finances, covering our bank, covering our businesses, every such hand, cut them off in the name of Jesus Christ. Every hole. In the cup, causing leakages. Uh -uh. You are walking and pouring water, walking, and the thing is just leaking away like that. Block every leakage in the name of Jesus Christ. 
those who have come to steal the cup, pata pata, that we don't even have any cup to put anything. Locate them this morning. Destroy them in the name of Jesus Christ. After today, let our cup begin to be filled. Let it run over. Let our joy come. And let there be a turnaround. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. If you believe it, jump up and say, Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. Greet your neighbor as you're sitting down. Say congratulations. You are at a turning point. Your cup will fill by force, by fire. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. As usual, this morning is just a morning where we just, you know, encourage us of what God has decided to do again this month. Last month, God began to tell us that everything that is called captivity will be rolled away. And once the captivity is rolled away, what you have is a turnaround. When the captivity comes in, Psalm 137 verse 1, the Bible says, Psalm 137 verse 1, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, he said, we were like them that dream. Then our mouth were filled with laughter and our tongue was singing. So anytime captivity rolls away, there must be a turnaround. And since your captivity has been rolled away last month, get ready for a turnaround in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, the prayer mountain is starting on Monday tomorrow, by the grace of God. Run through Wednesday as usual. For those who have been attending consistently, I give God the glory for your lives and for the testimonies that some of you have shared openly and some have shared personally with me. I'm greatly encouraged by what God is doing on the prayer mountain. And I trust God that this month again, on this prayer mountain, I say, In the name of Jesus Christ. Secondly, is Thanksgiving. Which means that as we begin to think of what God is going to do, ahead of what he's going to do from Monday to Wednesday, we begin to rejoice. When you know that good news is coming, you begin to rejoice ahead. Is that not so? Praise the name of the Lord. All right now. So this morning, short exhortation just to assure you of what God is going to do here. Monday to Wednesday, God has positioned the men of God who he has prepared to bring the message that will bring about your turning point or turn around come with me to exodus chapter 3 verse 1 to 5 exodus chapter 3 verse 1 to 5 i'll just exhort from there and then we'll pray and close It's a story, just one story I want to tell you. Just one story. All the other stories, you will hear them from tomorrow. He says, now, Moses kept the flock of who? Who is Jethro? His father-in-law. Don't forget that this man is 80. At that age, the man was keeping the flock, not his own, the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law. For those of you who are old, or even in your youth, they are still working for other people. In the name above all names, by the end of this program, there will be a turnaround. There's nothing as good as working for yourself. I have had to cancel people who have complained to me that they are working their heart out and they get pittance. Big work, small remuneration. It's bad enough to be a servant. It's worse to be a servant to your father-in-law. I don't want to dwell on that. Those who are you know, local people like me, you understand. Working for a father-in-law is not the best place to work. Hello? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? 
There's a proverb like that. It's bad enough that this man is a servant, is worse that he's uh, working for his father in law. Point number two. Just leave the scripture there for me. God bless you. At 80, he had served this man for 40 years. He got to this man's place by default when he was 40 years. He walked from 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. The man is still a servant. No promotion. They didn't even give him one quarter of it to say, at least Laban did that for, for, for Jacob. He worked for 40 years. No promotion. Go, go pass. Go fail. You don't leave one place. Stagnation. I'm using that again to pray for you because all I'm just going to do is just make pronouncement as usual. That this year, you will not work for your enemy. Yeah. I said this year, from, starting from today, you will not labor in vain. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. It was a situation that was hopeless and helpless. A condition of servitude. 40 years, nothing to show for it. Point number three from this story. He was operating at the backside of the desert. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to where? Where? Backside of where? The desert. It's bad enough that this guy is operating in the desert. In the desert, it is dry. There is nothing in the desert. No road. No houses. No TFC. No Mr. Biggs. No. Not in the desert. No place of comfort. But it's worse that he is in the back of the desert. How wicked can the devil be? Last month, Pastor Mede was talking to you about different kinds of prisons. Prison different from prison. If you've gone to, you know, uh, the, 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 the cell in the police station, that's a, a kind of prison. If you go to the uh, prison in Ekoi, that is a prison. But when you go to maximum security prison, that's another kind of prison. This man was operating from the backside of the desert. Some of you right now may be getting the really worst part of life. The worst part of life. But in the name above all names, before the end of this month, God will bring you from the back to the front. I say God will bring you from the last to the first. I say God will bring you from down below upwards. From now, you begin to operate on the mountain in the name of Jesus Christ. For those who said amen, receive it today. Amen. Point number four. From that story, you led the flock to the backside of the desert. And he came to the what? Where did he come to? Mountain of who? Mountain of God. When he came to the mountain of God at Horeb, Horeb means desert. But this mountain, when he got there, things changed. <laughs> there was a turnaround. That's why I know that concerning someone, you may have been attending the prayer mountain, but this time around, you are coming from the back of the desert. You are coming from a hopeless and helpless situation. You're coming from a place where people have written you off. Even you yourself, you are contemplating giving up. That it, no, it's better to die. But you're coming out to the front on the mountain of God. As you step in here from tomorrow, I said, 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, it was a turning point for him. But you see, some of us have also experienced turning points in our life. But we blew it up. We have experienced turning point. God has brought us from the back to the front before. But when we got there, we messed up. And then we went back to where we, we started from. The number of people that God has given a good job. You got there rather than do the job diligently and be promoted. You messed up there. Either that you stole their money or you were not faithful or you're not coming early to work or something and they sacked you and you went back again. You blew your turning point. Or some of us that God has given a relationship, beautiful relationship. The guy comes around and is just, you know, wildly in love with you and you just took it, took it for granted. That uh, I know he, uh, he likes me now. Uh, uh, I can do anything. Any small thing happens, you get angry. You don't want to talk to him. I'm not going to call him. He will call me. I know he will call me. First day, no call you. Second day, no call you. Third day, no call you. Instead of you to use your hand to repair your thing yourself, go forward, you are sitting down there. By the time you see him again driving, another person don't date there. Ah, where is it happen? Don't cry. Don't cry. God brought you to a turning point. You blew it up yourself because of pride, arrogance. Hold on to what belongs to you when God gave it to you. Hold on well. Don't look at other people's thing. No problem. You hold your own, I hold my own. I'm not going to let you take my own. I'm not dumb. So God has given some people opportunities. You blew it. I have good news for you. There's a God of a second chance. I said there's a God of a second chance. He's going to be sitting in the house from tomorrow. You blew that chance, come. You'll get another chance again. In fact, it will now be better than the first one. Praise the name of the Lord. Now let's look at the example of this same Moses again. Because he blew his opportunity. But God gave him a second chance. Let's look, come with me to see the story of this man. Moses was a boy that was destined to die. But God took him to the palace. Let's look at his story from the beginning. Give me Exodus chapter 1 verse 16. Exodus chapter 1 verse 16. Point number one. Moses was born with a death sentence hanging on him. Before he was born, he was meant to die. Pharaoh the king said, When ye do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women, and you see them upon the stools to burn Pekin. If it be a son, then ye shall do what? Kill him. So, and that was when the mother of Moses was pregnant for Moses. In other words, Moses had been destined, there's a decree against his life that he, there's no chance that he will live. There's no chance that he will live. Praise the name of the Lord. I stand upon the altar. I pronounce to someone here that every decree in the physical or in the spiritual realm made against your existence or your seed, they have already said that, you know, uh, she's pregnant. It's a lie. She can never have the baby. They have decreed that that baby must die. Either be premature or die when they is being born. Every such decree that is made against you or against any of your children, I cancel it in Jesus' name. The Bible says the blood of Jesus erases from all things. By the blood of Jesus Christ, every such decree against your life and your children, it is canceled in the name of Jesus. Isaiah chapter 10 verse 1. Isaiah chapter 10 verse 1. The Bible says, Woe unto them who decree unrighteous decree. Woe unto them 
that decree unrighteous decree and that right grievous which they have prescribed they have decreed in the coven the witches and wizard that this family we're going to kill them one by one rather than increase they will be decreasing every day that is what they have spoken they have even written it down with the blood of bulls and the blood of, 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 of animals that a hey, write it down this thing will they have prescribed there's a prescription against your life prescription against your marriage i stand upon the altar i decree this day that every unrighteous decree against you or against your children or against anything that is yours is cancelled in the name of jesus is cancelled in the name of jesus every king that wants to make a decree on your behalf no matter how what level they are in the evil world i dethrone them now in the name of jesus christ point number three on the day of birth a decree has been made against this man that he will die but on the day of birth as the mother came into the you know into the delivery room not the labor room you had I, I, I listened to you know a pastor when he was praying for the dedication he said that God brought them to delivery room not labor room I stand upon this altar I'm decreeing before tomorrow that for every woman who is pregnant now God will take you to delivery room to deliver you will not go to a labor room to labor in the name of Jesus Christ whether you are pregnant now or not it's good for you to be saying this amen properly because every prayer that you make now even if it's not relevant now they are stored that's what the Bible says in Revelation so that the day that it will happen, the prayer will just come down and speak on your behalf. If you keep quiet now because, well, I don't have children again. I've had a lot of my children. What about your grandchildren? What about your own children? What about yourself too? You know, you never can tell. <laughs> we've, we've, uh, hello? 60 year old. Ah, uh, okay. Oh. Okay. Of, you heard them from the camp now. 50 something, 60. Having children. Uh -huh. So, um, just say Amen. If you don't say it for yourself, say it for those who need it. Praise the name of the Lord. On the day of delivery, the mother went to the delivery room to deliver. Luke chapter 1 verse 57. Luke chapter 1 verse 57. The Bible says, Now Elizabeth full time came that she should be what? Delivered. Not labor. Delivered. The Bible always used delivered. Labor is used when there is going to be calamity. Like the, the birth of Ichabod. There was labor. Because there is calamity. Elizabeth's time was full. The full time came that she should be delivered. And she brought forth a son. I decree from this point that every woman who is pregnant in this house, you shall come to full term in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not terminate it before full term in the name of Jesus Christ. And when it is time, you will go to delivery room in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. When you get to delivery room, you will bring forth in the name of Jesus. Amen. We will not carry the dead from the living. We will not carry a living from the dead. Both the mother and the child will hear their voices in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. And they will rejoice over you. I said they will rejoice over you. Two weeks ago, or thereabout, we had our first baby in the maternity. The first baby. And you know, the baby was not registered with us. The mother was not registered with us. She registered somewhere. But when it was time, she went to the hospital and they told her at that maternity center that they couldn't take her on. They couldn't take her on. The pastor went with the woman. 
they had to rush when they when they rejected them there they had to rush to you know the uh, the pro, uh, provincial maternity but we accepted them because jesus accepts everybody they are not registered with us but the fact is that a baby is there created by god the joy of a family is there maybe it's the first one we admitted do you know that before they could say jack robinson to call the doctor to the baby had come we brought the doctor in anyway because we have you know a consultant gynecologist that comes in there every thursday so we called him he came in on emergency took a look at the hood and said everything is fine eh, it must be fine hello i say it must be fine in the name of jesus christ every one of you who is here or your relations to which some powers have said they will reject them somewhere when they are carrying them around then something will happen every such power the ground will swallow them i said the ground will swallow them in the name of jesus christ point number three that was when they got there and the woman brought the baby the egyptian midwives took a look at the baby it's a boy maybe one of them said ah let's kill him the other said eh? this boy went fine like this don't you see glory glory on top of this boy they didn't kill the boy they disobeyed the king and they left this boy talk about favor talk about favor I speak to someone who is looking at me right now. The things that you are not qualified for, favor will give it to you. Every law that says that they will should not take you because of X, Y, Z. You had in the camp the testimony of somebody who said, they wanted to marry somebody, say he's from Undo. Say, ah, no, 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 no. At the end of the day, when they ask the name, he says his name is Kalejai. Ah. If it's college, I end in the other one, it's a good or no person. Favor. Because of a name. Your name will favor you. Your complexion will favor you. Your height will favor you. In the name of Jesus. They left the boy alive. He escaped. The mother carried him home. But after a while, the mother began to see that, ah, they will soon see that this boy is a boy and he's a Hebrew. So he carried the boy and he took him to the river, put him on, on a brush and say, God, whatever it is that you need to do with him, I can't go beyond this point. There's a point beyond which a man cannot go. So she left her son. You can imagine if it was your own child. You just took the child, put him on a river. Say, river, anywhere you carry him, go. Lord, is in your hand. On the river are so many things. Stingray is in the river that could have stung him to death. There's octopus that could have stung him to death. There are, what else do you have in the water? Ishawuru. Crocodile. Crocodile is in the water. That could have eaten him very easily. And there is some shark, the kind that carried the uh, Jonah. Abi? The shark that swallowed an old man. What would he do with the small boy? Suya. But all of these things, they came and they passed this boy. As he was going on the water, shark they pass. A, a snake they pass. Everything they pass. I prophesy into your life. As you travel this year, every evil will pass you by. Calamity will pass you by. In the name of Jesus. When evil is going in the front, you will come from behind. When you are behind, evil will be in the front. You will not jam evil. Evil will not jam you. you will not, your children will not jam evil. Evil will not jam your children. In the name of Jesus. The boy went through. Until he got to the end of the river. Who was standing there? Pharaoh's daughter. The one who made a decree that every male should die. 
is the one that is there. Can you imagine? But rather than the female, the, the, the daughter of Pharaoh, say, who is this? A Hebrew. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Bring knife, big knife. Cut him here like Boko Haram. No, 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 she didn't do that. She took a look. She saw the glory. I said, no, this one. Other men must, can die, but not this one. I said, others can die. But, you know what Isaiah chapter 60 verse 2 says? Isaiah chapter 60 verse 2 says that, it, it says, verse 1 says, arise and shine for the glory of the Lord is risen. In verse 2 it says, it says that, you know, uh, uh, darkness may cover the earth and gross darkness the people. He said, but for me, his glory shall rise upon me. Which means that people may die on the main road minus me. This year, things may be hard for people minus me. They may deny people things this year minus me. Hello? It says that for me, the Lord shall arise upon me and his glory shall be seen in me. Tell your neighbor, I am different. So they saw this boy, rather than kill him, he took, her, he, he took she took him on and said, this is a fine boy. And he was looking around. I, I, I don't know how to look after children. I'm a spoiled um, daughter of Pharaoh. Who is going to help me? Then the sister of Moses was standing close by, following what was going on. The daughter of Pharaoh looked at her and said, Sister, can you get me somebody to look after this child? It's a beautiful boy. The guy said, oh, yes, I can, I can, I can. Uh, he said, go and get him. She went and called her mother. She said, oh, yeah, mama, come and look after your picking. The thing, when the devil thinks, say, he go, he go die. Can you see how God is working? Now, listen, it's not even finished. By the time that they brought the mother, the woman was ready to do it free of charge. But the daughter of Pharaoh said, no, no, how much do you want to charge me? Collected money for looking after her own child. Hello? I say to you from now on till the end of this year, everywhere that you have a need, a divine helper will be standing there. <laughs> took the boy, looked after the boy, brought the boy back, and they took the boy into the palace. He didn't say, keep, I give you discretion to keep him in your home. He said, bring him. And Moses relocated from the, from the, you know, Ajegule, you know, that they lived into VGC, where the palace is. Began to eat with, you know, a, a golden spoon and golden fork. You can imagine somebody who was using his hand before. They begin to teach him how to use a cutlery. They are waiting on him. Hello? Turn around. Life turned around. From back to the front. That's what's happening to someone as I speak right now. The person who is taking you from the back to the front is standing at the gate right now. As you go out, he will just grab your hand. He's taking you to the front. Never to go back again. If you believe it, say better amen. How did he blow it up? Maybe he was in the palace. How did he become a candidate for the back of the desert. Exodus chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. Exodus chapter 2, verse 14. He was presumptuous. He assumed what has not been given to him. For you to assume things is dangerous. They have not made you something, you are already acting it. A sister was told by a brother in the fellowship. Say, ah, sister, please be praying along with me for a partner of the future. I'm ready to marry. Be praying with me. Oh, the sister went away. Say, oh yeah. And she began to display. Because the guy says he's looking for wife. And she thinks that she's also looking for husband. Eh, two, give four. So he, he was acting. So when the brother saw her, after one week, he said, sister, are you, I hope you are praying for me. He said, oh, yes, I have agreed. I have agreed. Ah, the guy said, you have agreed. What are we saying? What are you saying? 
I say pray for somebody, not for yourself, pray for somebody. Presumption. Of course, even if the guy wanted to have before, you say you abebelube. This one is abebelube. That's what happened to this man Moses. Moses looked at the circumstance of his birth, how he has been escaping everything. The, 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 the midwives, the river, the, 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 the Pharaoh's daughter. And he assumed that, yes, I'm in the palace now, so I'm a prince. So when he see people fighting, he will go there and begin to judge them. One day he went and judged against a Hebrew and an Egyptian. He killed the Egyptian and he buried him in a shallow grave. The next day he came again. Oba, you know, and uh, he saw two Hebrews this time around. And he said, you are wrong. The one that he said he was wrong. Now asked him, sir, who made you a prince or a judge? In this land, this Obodo Egypt, who made you? You want to kill me like you kill the Egyptian? Ah. The man said, eh? somebody knew. And he knew that Pharaoh would cut off his neck. So he took his bag and his baggage. He left the palace and relocated to the back of the desert. Now, who is responsible is it God? Is it God who is responsible? Who is responsible? I pray for you. Oh, You will not be the architect of your own calamity. In the name of Jesus Christ. That's how he got to the back of the desert. Condition changed. Evil wind of change brought him to the wilderness. But one day, let's go back to our Exodus 3. As we finish up, Exodus 3, verse 3. I think we read 2. Okay, verse 1. Okay. I have verse 2. All right. In, in, verse, in verse 1, the Bible said that he was going as usual as a servant. And then suddenly he came to the mountain of God, the prayer mountain. When he got there, now look at what happened in verse 2 at the prayer mountain. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire. Let me tell you beforehand that from tomorrow, the anointing that we're getting from tomorrow to Wednesday is what I call fire anointing. Monday to Wednesday, fire anointing. The angel appeared in a burning bush. And then look at what the guy did in verse 3, which is what, you know, I'm talking about. And Moses said, I will now do what? That was his turnaround. He said, I will. You have to make up your mind that you will turn. If you don't make up your mind, you will remain where you are. God is not going to turn you by force. He said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush is not burnt? Now look at verse 4, which is what we have on the board. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside, God saw it. Not imagining. Prophetic action is going to be happening here from tomorrow. Prophetic action. If they say move, if you move like this, in the spirit realm you have moved. Every barricade will break. Every door that is shut against you, which you have to move through. Ah, tomorrow, you will see doors breaking, breaking up. People will just be walking into their marriage easily. Hello? As you just sit down like this. Somebody just come and say, sister, I don't know. I beg. I just beg you. Put in hand for pocket. Bring out the ring. I beg. The years when they take you make younger, younger don't pass. I said, from now on, hello, there is a turnaround in the name of Jesus Christ. He got to the mountain. The Lord saw that he turns aside. Then God called him. He didn't call him from his house. He called him from the prayer mountain. Out in the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, God will call somebody's name here from tomorrow. I said, God knows your name and he will call your name tomorrow. He called his name and he said, here am I. And then he began to give him instructions. The man who was moving in the direction of failure, 
hopelessness and helplessness, he turned and faced the other direction. Every direction you are facing right now that is not consistent with the will of God for you, I command you to turn around in the name of Jesus. Every direction that will move you into sin or move you into calamity or move you into failure, right now, in the name above all names, I put a stop sign before you in the name of Jesus Christ. Every error that you are about to make right now in the choice of this man that is really not going to be the right choice for you, that is just using razzmatazz to bring you in so that he can punish you. Ah, every such movement right now, I terminate it by fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Blessed be God forevermore. At the end of the day, my time is up. At the end of the day, God gave me a new assignment. From being a servant, he said, no, you are becoming a leader. No more servant. He turned a leader of two million people to march them out from Egypt into the promised land. God gave him an, an authority in his hand with which he could open the Red Sea. With the mantle, he could command anything to happen. Open, it will open. See, close, and it will close. Come with your mantle tomorrow, to Monday. Because God is going to be anointing your mantle. That mantle, it could be your hand. Anywhere you put your hand like this, something must happen. You are going to any interview, you get there, just without people seeing you, just do as if whatever. Door must open. I say God, doors will open for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. At the end of the day, all those who wanted to stop them, they ended up in the Red Sea. I don't have time to go through that, but you are going to be hearing more of this from tomorrow till Wednesday. Hello? Are you there? Now, how many believe God that it is a possibility? How many believe that God can change their circumstance? How many believe that it is possible, even as things are hard, for God to turn your situation around? Rise on your feet. Rise on your feet. At the turning point, so many things can happen. In Exodus, I'll just give you one prayer point as I close. One prayer point. Exodus 15, where they begin to sing a song. Because you are going to sing a song. Exodus 15, and I think it's verse, uh, verse 9 to 10. Verse 9 to 10. Exodus 15, 9 to 10. All Exodus 15 is the song of Moses after that God had taken them through the Red Sea out of captivity. They began to sing a song. And you can see the song from the beginning. Um, you can sing it. The choir also know how to sing it. But here, the Bible says, the enemy said, and that's what they're saying, since God gave us this word, the enemy has been talking. They said, I will pursue them. I will overtake them. I will divide the spoil. My loss shall be satisfied upon them. I will draw my sword. My hand shall destroy them. Seven plans that they had against you for this month. Will they succeed? They say, Abani Konda. Jokuta. Every evil plan against you, God will turn them to blessing. In the name of Jesus Christ. Seven things I will pursue. I will overtake. I will divide the spoil. The thing will never do. They want to divide them again. I will, my loss shall be satisfied upon them. I will draw my sword. My hand shall destroy them. That's their own plan. Look at what God did in verse 10. Which is what would happen here from tomorrow. In fact, it's happening from right now. Thou this blow with thy wind. Only one thing. The sea did what? Covered them. They did what? They sank as lead. Into what? Mighty waters. O the well They planned seven things. God planned only one thing. One. And he covered all their seven. Lift up your hand. Say, Father. Say, Father. Every 
against satanic plan against my overflow and my turnaround frustrate them in the name of Jesus open your mouth and pray every plan frustrate them in the name of Jesus disappoint them they will not perform their enterprise thank you father in Jesus name we have prayed before we pray the last prayer I want to urge you you have a part to play it was Moses that says I will turn not anybody he was he made up his mind that I will turn then when he turned God said I have seen that he has turned and then he began to make pronouncement against him you're here you've heard the word of God you have seen what God has promised to do he has done it before and he's a God that can repeat himself but you have a decision to make at this point that I will turn which direction are you facing right now if you're still in sin you're still in disobedience you have not surrendered your life to him then you need to turn it is only in your turning that God will see that you have turned and then he will begin to speak with you what he's promised for this month in only 30 seconds you're here you want me to be praying with you right now you have made up your mind that you will turn you made up your mind that you will turn and you want God to see you lift up your right hand I want to pray with you that God will see that you have made up your mind that you will turn it is you who must make up your mind if you are tired of the valley like Moses backside for 40 years I don't know how long you have been in your own if you are comfortable you can continue but if you are not comfortable and you want to turn around this is your opportunity because I'm praying with you right now for a turnaround. You're moving away from what direction you're going. You're moving towards Christ right now. Who is able to do all things for you. If you have given your life to Christ before. But now you have turned away from him. You want to restitute. It's time for you to restitute. Come to him right now. I'm waiting for you here. I'll be praying with you in front here. Come in a hurry. Don't let anything stop you. Don't let anyone stop you. You don't have to be ashamed. If you are tired, Moses was not ashamed. <laughs> At 80, he turned. He turned. He turned. Where are you? I'm waiting for 10 of you. I'm waiting for 10. 10 of you. It is the will of God. But you can choose not to. Today is your day of salvation. Let nothing stop you. The 10 of you that are coming. Ten of you are coming. There are only two that are out now. There are eight of you that must be here. Eight of you that God has made up his mind to. But you have a choice. And I have only 30 seconds. I'm just going to count to five. I'm going to count to five. You're there. You want to make up your mind to turn around. Let God see that you are turned around. Surrender your life to him. And he will begin to guide you from now on. One. I'm counting five. It's your choice. It's your choice. Two. Every spirit that is holding you down, I command them to lose their hold right now. Lose your hold in the name of Jesus Christ. Let them go on to Jesus Christ, their Savior. Let nothing stop you. Let nothing stop you. Break loose and come out right now. From the top, you young guys from the top, are you not tired? Are you not tired of failure? Write exam, write exam, you're not passing. Do an interview, you're not passing. Are you not tired? What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Come, 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 come. Come, come. Jesus will wait for you from all over the place. Particularly from the top. Particularly from the top. There are three of you who are supposed to be coming from the top. There are at least three of you that God has made up his mind to help this month. You are there on the top. I want you down right now, right now, right now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. Blessed be God forevermore.
the Lord is full of love. I don't see any reason why he should stop me from praying at this point for those who have voluntarily come out. I still, I don't want to tell you what I have seen, but please, in your own interests, <laughs> in your own, your, whether you give your life to Christ or not, it does not affect God. God will remain God. Whether you give your life or not, God remains God. But you are there, particularly at the top. My spirit here, at this top here, at least there are three of you who ought to be down here and you are still up there. And God is merciful to be saying, hold on, because I brought them in order to save their souls. And you are, you are, you're taking God's time. Don't take him for granted. There are three of you from the top there. You are supposed to be down here. Two more must come down here in your own interest. In your own interest. I can't do better than I have done. I can't do better than I'm done. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Okay. Please just make sure you join us. I've, I've seen them coming down. Uh, join us. Church, please just, you know, stretch your hands towards these ones. Particularly this lovely seed. This lovely seed that have come. That the Lord will accept them. Even in their youth, that God will accept them. And then will turn around their situation in the name of Jesus Christ. Give them a hope for tomorrow. Blessed be your name. Let the blood atone for their sins. Let your blood cleanse their sin. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, my Father. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Father. See how kind our God is. See how kind our God is. Very patient, very loving. He has kept us for another three minutes because of a couple of people that's how loving our god is father we give you praise you are just awesome you are just too much thank you for your love thank you for your mercy we present them before you we ask our lord and our god that their sins oh god be washed away by your blood in the name of jesus christ write their names in the book of life from now on the power to go and sin no more release unto them in the name of jesus christ and we're asking that even using them Use them, O oh God, to bring in their peers to Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. Blessed be your name forevermore. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. Can I, some, what shall I open here for me? Hmm? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. The first. It's the habit of the church to give brand new Bibles to the very first four people that surrender their life to Christ. Okay? Courtesy of a family that the Lord will remember forever. There you go, sir. Number one. Thank you, sir. Number one in Jesus' name. Number one in Jesus' name. Number one in Jesus' name. Number four, you'll be number one in Jesus' name. All right, so you're going to fill this um, forms that has been given to you. And they are going to bring the forms back to me by the grace of God. And the prayer request that's on it, I am going to set myself in agreement with you. I will be praying over this, your form, when they bring it back to me. And then the testimony will be coming to you. And if God gives me revelation concerning any of you, through the number, your phone number or email that's on the form, I'll be able to get back to you what God is saying to me. And together, we will rejoice. Praise the name of the Lord. All right, now, so you're going with my brother carrying the, carrying the counseling um, board. You'll fill out your forms. Come back quickly so that we can begin to rejoice together. The celebration has started. God bless you. Give Jesus, give Jesus a big hand. Father in heaven, we thank you. We give you praise because you're a faithful God. Now, O oh God, that we have heard your word and we are assured that we are at a turning point, let, O oh God, the next phase indicate our celebration of an turnaround situation in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Now I can see everything. Turning around.